Hi there, and we are continuing with the first lecture for uh, Piano Method Level 1A, right? This is the second part of it. This is page five. So onwards we go with learning how to read music. Uh, so page five, we, uh, page four, we ended talking about uh, treble clef. I forgot to mention um, when we had treble clef, um, that also typically means it's your right hand. The treble clef means pretty much the right hand side of the piano. And usually your right hand is on the right side of your body. So um, we talked about middle C and those letters. And those are pretty much the notes you're going to start with with the right hand. And it's important to understand that because next we head into the left hand. Um, so placement, we talked about that being middle C. Um, and they say that's your right thumb is the, letter, is the number one. So your thumb is going to sit on that middle C. And the rest of your fingers will sit on adjacent white keys. And again, we're just talking about white keys first. Eventually we'll hit black keys, but not yet. All right, so if you're looking at your piano, again, look for the middle, the center of the piano, usually where the, where the name is. Uh, down below that set of two black keys to the left, there's your middle C, so your right thumb is sitting on that, and the rest of your fingers are just sitting on adjacent white keys. So those five notes are what we're starting with. That's what we're learning to read, and that's also just where your right hand's gonna sit for a while. All right, so moving onwards to page five, um, this clef is bass clef, right? We looked at treble clef for the right hand. This bass clef is pretty much for the left hand. So again, I'm gonna draw some of this to make, make sure it all makes sense. Um, this one looks like this. You got kind of a heavy dot, and then it looks like a big ear or something. And then you do have these two other dots that sit like that. This is called bass clef, B-A-S-S, -S, like a bass, but bass clef. Um, we talked about treble clef comes from the letter G. This actually comes from the letter F. This is an F clef. Um, it doesn't look like an F the way we usually write it, but the way they used to write it, which is like this, right? That's that. That's what that's supposed to be, a kind of a stylized F. Um, and just looking at where these dots are, are placed, this heavy dot, right, it's the fourth line from the bottom. These two dots surround that. And that, this whole symbol of an F, they're pointing out that fourth line. So if you have bass clef and you have a note sitting around this fourth line, that is an F, right? So if you forget everything else and you need to figure out, you know treble clef is a G and you know this is an F. So they point out two really specific notes. All right, so once you know that, everything else, just like with treble clef, it's alphabetical. If you go upwards, right? So if we go to this space and then this line, Right, as we head upwards, it's just forwards in your alphabet. If this was an F, which it was, that's a G, right? And we run out of letters, so that's an A. So this is a B, and onwards, okay? If you head downwards, let's pull the F over here, stick it over here, and then move down from there. Just like we did with treble clef, if you're going downwards, you gotta go backwards in your alphabet. So, uh, this was our F. If we go down, the letter before F is a, right, thinking about it, it's an E, right? Down one more, it's a D. Then down one more is a C, right? We said um, we had our middle C's. This is the C below that. Actually, um, I'm going to stick one more note above this one just so you can see this. That B, the next thing should have been a C, just like with the right, the treble clef, we were running out of lines. So if we stick a ledger line, a little extra line, we're extending the range of these staff lines that would be a middle C. So it's the same middle C that your right hand plays, so your, your notes kind of collide with each other. Um, but if you head down that bass clef, then you hit the C below, right? So just looking at the piano really quick, so here's our middle C. So some of those letters we just looked at, the B, A, G, that's the F from the F clef, right? Just below middle C, that's F, E, D. So the C we just looked at is that one, right? So. Basically, this is the second space on the bass clef. That's that C below middle C. Um, just like with the right, with the treble clef in the right hand, if you skip a line or a space, you got to skip that letter. So if we skip to this space, that was a C. It should have been a B in between. So now that's an A. Right. So just watch for those things. Stick one more up here, just because uh, when we start talking about ways to remember bass clef, you're going to need that. So one more down. And think about it, right? We ran out of letters, so it should be the end of our alphabet, which is a G. 
Okay, it's confusing, <laughs> but hopefully that kind of makes sense. So just like with the treble clef, you can kind of remember some of these things. If we extract the space notes, that's an A, that's a C, and an E, and then over somewhere we had a G, right? So we stick those here. So it's not quite as fancy as face, but again, it's a saying. This is an A, this is all cows eat grass. Right, A-C-E-G, all cows eat grass. So if you can keep that in mind, that'll help as you're jumping around bass clef. It is different from face, right? It's a different letters, it's a little confusing. We'll look at that in a second. Um, and then if you look at the line notes, again, it's just little memory devices to help you remember these. G, B, D, F, and it's an A on top. This is good boys do fine always. So it's a little different from treble clef. All right, so um, so you do notice, okay, so let's go back and take a look at that. For treble clef, it was every good boy does fine, right? E, G, B, D, F. So the, it's shifted just a little when you hit bass clef, right? You have good boys do fine always. There's just a couple letters missing from the bottom, right? The, um, this one starts with an E, G, B. This is starting with a G. Anyway, um, so just keep in mind they are different. So if we stuck... Let's just for comparison, if we had a treble clef and we said, oh, why don't you play, say, this note? This is the G, right? The G clef from the treble clef, right? That G. Um, if we stuck the same note in bass clef, right? If we stick it on the second line from the bottom, what letter is that, right? If we figure it out, good boys, it's a B. This is a B, right? They look... They're in the same place, but because of the clef sign, they're actually very different notes. This one's higher than middle C. This one's pretty pretty low, right? It's way below the, the next C down. Anyway, just keep in mind, even though they, they might look similar, you do have to remember two different processes for the two clefs. It's confusing, but hopefully that will make sense. All right, so we, we said uh, right hand. We were in C position. The left hand's also in C position, right? Here's a middle C on this this diagram keyboard, your left hand pinky is sitting on the C below that. Um, and then your other fingers are sitting over here. Right, hopefully that makes sense. So basically for your left hand, if this is middle C, right, you want the C below that, two black keys down here, this one, that's your pinky, D, E, F, G, right, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And your right hand was sitting right next to it, right here. You got C, D, E, F, G, right? So hopefully that's all making sense. Um, but do keep in mind a couple things. So um, your thumbs, no matter which hand you're looking at, your thumb is a one. So this is actually a five, four, three, two, one, right? That's a pinky, that's a five. When you're looking at your right hand, this is thumb is a one, two, three, four, five. So left to right is not the same, right? It's from the inside out. Thumbs are both ones, okay. That will come back to haunt you. Um, looking back at page five, um, the next section down, talking about note values. So you've noticed probably when you're looking at written music, there's different shapes, right? So far we were just using empty circles, but there's all these other possibilities. So just looking at what those are and what they mean. Um, so the first one, the basic one is called a quarter note. And I'm gonna stick some of them up here. All right, so let's go, let's, let's go back to treble clef. Can't hurt. All right, so if you have a treble clef um, and you have, if you want to write quarter notes, I'm gonna stick one here. So basically it's a filled in circle with a stem, right? And sometimes they look like this. You got a filled in circle with a stem. These should be vertical and right-handed slanting a little, but they should be straight up and down. Um, these are both called quarter notes because of the shape, filled circles with the stem. Okay, and basically these ones are one beat each. Now what's a beat? It depends on the music. Sometimes you can have a faster beat, sometimes a slower beat. I like to, at the beginning, just think like one beat per second. So one, 100, two, 100, three. Each of these quarter notes will be one second, right? So one beat. So if you have a whole bunch of quarter notes, it would sound like one, two, three, right? They might be different sounds, but each one will last a, for one second. Okay, so that's the idea with the quarter notes. Um, 
one of them is has the stem going up, one has the stem going down. The only reason they do that, let me just pull some down here, um, it depends on location on these staff lines. So let's make just some quarter notes. So just, just some blobby circles, right, filled in circles. Um, and again, your theory book, the, your theory book will do a lot of stuff, but this is one of the pages is devoted to stems. So if your um, circle is below the center line, then the stems should head up on the right, like this. Once you hit the middle line and anything above that middle line, right, we're looking at these five staff lines, it hits the middle line, your stem's gonna head down on the left, down, down. So it's always down on the left, up on the right, but it's just where that circle is located on these five lines, right? Once you hit the center line and you head up above it, even if you're way up here, right, that stem should head down. So basically head back into the center of the staff lines, right? So if we're below it, just like, we'll stick one down here, right? Make sure your, your stem line heads back into the middle and then, right, you can cross over a few lines. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so back to these. We've got quarter notes. The next kind of note is an empty circle like this with the stem and same direction as with uh, quarter notes. Um, the stem lines should follow it back into the center of the staff lines. We'll stick one here too. These are called half notes, right? And these are two beats each. Hopefully you can see those two beats. So they're longer. So if you've got one beat per second, this is one, two, one, two, right? Different note one, two, doesn't matter what note it is or what, what pitch it is, um, it's gonna be two beats long, right? So they're longer. All right, the next per possible kind of note value is a half note with a dot. And these are called dotted half notes. So if you've got an empty circle, again, your stem's heading up, that makes it a half note. The dot adds a beat. Let me stick one here as well. Same idea, down stem with a dot. The dot always goes after. So dotted half note, right? Very creative name. These are three beats. So just like you would think you hold it for three seconds for now, right? Beats could go faster, but for now we're just thinking one, two, three, one, two, three, right? That's the idea with the dotted half notes. Um, and then one more possibility is called the whole note. It's just a big empty circle, which we've been writing a bunch of those like this or like this. But you notice there's no stem, so you don't have to worry about stem direction. These are called whole notes. And these are four beats, just like you would imagine. I'll play a couple of those. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No matter where the location is, it's going to last that long. OK, so hopefully that's working out in your mind. Um, and these for treble clef, it doesn't matter. It can also be in bass clef. Same idea. The shape of it tells you how long to hold. Um, and then location, right, is if it's up or down, that tells you which key to play, right? Hopefully that's making sense. All right, so back to our page. Um, the center of it measures and bar lines, right? Notes are grouped into measures. Measures are divided by bar lines. So we're looking at, this is a whole stream of notes, um, and but a lot of this information you should know, right? Because we've already done pretty much all this stuff. So that first symbol is a bass clef, right? And then uh, if you think about what letter should that one be? Hmm, all cows, right? If we're doing left hand, all cows, that's a C. And there's three, there's four of those, right? C, and what kind of notes are these? How long do they last? Right, those are quarter notes, right? Just like this, one count each. Each one's one beat, one, two, three, four, right? And then you have what are called bar lines. It just divides this note into a specific number of beats. And we'll talk about more about that in just a second. So this bar line, you've got four beats, bar line, four beats, bar line, four beats, right? This is four beats. This is also one, two, three, four beats. That's four beats. Um, so each of these boxes is called a measure, and these are the bar lines that divide them. You can call these measures or bars, right, in a bar line. All right, so this is all left hand, right? Four Cs. This is the next note up. If you forget what it is, good boys do, right? That's a D. But it is just after that C, it's the next thing. It's a D. There's four of those. Up to the all cows eat. E. Four of those. 
Um, and then this one, right, a little higher, it's an F. And now this is a half note because the shape is different. You've got an empty circle, two counts. G, two counts. And then all the way back down to what is that? Hmm, a C, right? It's just like that first one. All cows. And that one's four beats long. All right, so all that information should kind of make sense. And so what you're going to listen for, I'll play this for you. you sh these notes should sound the same. It should rise and these should sound the same, but these are all the same amount of time. They're all one count each, right? And another rise, another rise, and then longer note, rise, longer note, and you should hear it drop all the way back to the same sound as the first one and hold for four counts. All right, so let me play this. If you want to try playing it, feel free. Um, what we're doing is looking for middle C and then the C below that, right? That's the pinky. So we're setting up like this. All right, so we're starting with four pinky notes. Okay, starting with the C, and I'm gonna I'm gonna point this out on the on the page first. Okay, one, two, ready, go. So C's, and D's, and the E's, and half, 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 half note, two, one, two, and then the C, one, two, three, four. Right. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me play it one more time, showing my hand. My ring is swinging around. Okay, one, two, ready, go. So C, two, one. The half notes, one, two, three, four, C, one, two, three, four. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, you notice you're just physically holding for how long you need for each different kind of note. All right, so back to the page. We're almost done with this page. It's a lot of information at the beginning. Um, definitely you'll be playing more, listening less in the future. All right, so the bottom, time signatures. Um, we just talked about how many beats were in each measure. Um, and then these symbols, you often see them at the beginning of music. And that tells you how many beats should end up being in there. So the most common one is four, four. So you've got, um, so music might look like this. You've got treble clef or bass clef, whatever it is. The very next thing is usually this, or there's, there's also sharps and flats. We'll hit those eventually, but usually they'll put some numbers like this, four, four. Um, and four, four, you can read it like a fraction, four quarters, right? Basically each measure should have four quarter notes, right? Same with this, this is three quarters, so three quarter notes in each measure, two quarter notes. That's the idea. So four quarter notes, just like we saw here, there were four quarter notes, four quarter notes, or something equivalent, like one, two, three, four, two half notes add up to the same thing, right? That's the idea with four, four time. Um, just to define, uh, you notice sometimes the top number is different. Sometimes later on the bottom number is different. It's not as common, but you might have, say, four, eight, uh, or four, two, right? Um, if it was four, two, read it like a fraction, it's four, two, four halves, right? Four, so that would mean each measure should have four half notes. It's not that common, but it does happen. And usually that just means that you've got a really long measure. Those half notes, you kind of feel like they're two beats each anyways, and then you have a total of eight beats in a measure. But that's, that's um, the idea of what's happening. Usually it's a four on the bottom. All right, um, if it's three, four, uh, just for sake of argument, so let's get rid of this. Let's say if it's three, four time, that means each measure is only three beats. So we could have something like this. One, two, three, right? With stems, one, two, three, bar line, right? Um, and it would continue that way, three beats in a measure. And it should make sense. If you have three, four time, you could use like half notes, Right? You could even use dotted half notes, but you can't use a whole note because that's four beats and it doesn't fit in one of these boxes. Right, You can only have three beats. Um, if you have a half note, one, two, then the next one should be a quarter note to make it up. Right, You've got three beats total. Right, So each measure should have a total of three beats, no more, no less. All right, And then if you have two, four times, similarly, your measure would be like this long, two beats, bar line. Okay. Um, Oh, and also just, just so you can hear, um, if you had uh, four, four time, three, four time, um, usually you'll hear the music that way. So for example, um, 
Twinkle Twinkle would be four four time like one two three four one two three four four right things will make the most sense in sets of four but if you had um, uh, three four time things should sound like one two three one two three one two right things will sound like they're in threes okay so that's the idea with those time signatures okay so very bottom of the page we're almost done with this page it says, always use the time signature to, de to determine the beats or counts in each measure. So here's the same notes that we just played, that whole line of notes with the bass clef, the Cs, the Ds, all that stuff. They're just helping you count it out. That's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? These are the beats as you go through the music. Um, and we're going to do a lot of counting uh, just to make sure if you don't count things right, they sound weird. Um, so this is a first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, first, right? Um, you're going to notice there's not extra time be, uh, at the bar lines. The only extra time is when you have long notes, right? So first one, two, and then third beat, three, four, then one, two, three, four, right? So as you're playing, just make sure you're counting as well. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, one more page to go, so if when you have time and patience, we'll hit page six. Thanks.